Hi guys, welcome to the show. I'm very excited to have my next guest. He is the one and only, so knowledgeable, so insightful, and so wonderful. Global wealth transfer, what can I call you? Expert? That Beyond guy. Expert. <laughs> it's that guy. You're no, the really. guy who said the thing. <laughs> really, like I can't make heads or tails out of this whole global transfer thing. But when you come on, you bring such clarity that I can actually take what you tell me and actually make sense when I'm talking to somebody. That's what I love about you. Welcome to the show, John. Great to Thank see you, you again. Likewise, my dear. I don't know how I can follow up that introduction, but I'll do my <laughs> best. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can tell it wasn't <laughs> scripted. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. It's very extemporaneous of you. I am so unscripted. You know that. Yeah, it works. Yeah. So how was your Easter? It was very uneventful, thanks. Just very quiet. Uh, I think God gave me a, a very, it rained a lot here in California over two days. So that kind of had something to do with it, which, you know, we're getting record rainfalls here, which is very unusual, but, you know, very welcome. Yeah. So oh, I, I just took the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Took the opportunity to rest and go to church, of course, and uh, rest up because I've had a, I'm going to have a very busy April in terms of activity and interviews and things like that, and uh, including you. Uh, so I think God knew that. So it was kind of a nice pause. How about you? Oh, that's great. Um, I had a wonderful Easter Resurrection Sunday. Uh, yes. had, I had the, whole, the house was filled. So we had the whole family and the grandkids were here and we do our annual Easter egg hunt because mm -hmm. we live next to a field. And um, and so we did that. So it was great. Had a really, really, really good time. Yeah. Looked like you had from from the picture. It looked nice. It's a great celebration. I, the funny thing is, and I have to say this, I said I had this great idea. Okay, so you know the Easter colors, right? Everything is colorful, mm -hmm. like colored eggs. So sure. I go out and I get, and anyone that's friends with me on Facebook would have seen the picture. But I go out and I get all different color dinner plates, and I set them all around the table. And now my daughter Frankie comes down and tells me, "Would you believe this? Biden is declaring or proclaiming whatever the word is." That it's not Easter Sunday, that it's Transgender Awareness yeah. Day or whatever. And yeah. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I said, I just posted the picture of all my different color plates around the table. Now it's going to look like it's I'm celebrating transgender with their flag. <laughs> we were laughing about it. I said, so ridiculous. I said, Satan is so jealous that oh, yeah. we are paying so much attention to, to Jesus on that Sunday. That, that's the only reason. It's so obvious now. John, yeah. isn't it so obvious? Like of course, nothing it, surprises it, us anymore. No, people know you well enough know, to know, Denise, that you wouldn't be celebrating anything to do with that. And the enemy can only copycat. He's only he's got a one trick playbook and that's it. But, uh, yeah. you know, what you're talking about, Denise, is actually a very deceptively complex notion, because um, I know a lot of people in my camp that got not so much the team, but, you know, friends, family members, what have you, got very upset and up in arms about it. I think that was what President Trump was allowing to happen, kind of like God allows Satan for a season yeah. and then, you know, flushes them out. I think President Trump was allowing that to wake people up. I think that was part of a wake up program to get the normies who are still kind yeah. of on the fence or kind of, you know, treading water to, to react. I think it, yeah. it was what it was designed to do. Because it's a sacred day. And you know what? Yeah. Even if people aren't celebrating the resurrection, part of the day it's still a day where they celebrate you know easter and right. and you know they have family time and maybe they do egg hunts you know and to take that away and and now the white house is doing an, an easter egg hunt on monday the day after why right. didn't they celebrate transgenders on monday okay so right. I, you know i just i told my kids i said satan you can see satan is just so jealous that everyone is focused on god and that's the only reason. Look, whether you're a believer or not, right? Um, I don't know too many people who like to have, you know, propaganda or inculcation shoved down their throats. You know, people like most people just want to live and let live. They just want to kind of do their thing, stay in their space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and just have their own little, you know, belief system and their own traditions, whatnot. Um, whether, like, again, you know, I'm just making a point, whether you're, you know, gay or straight or whatever. There's a lot of gay people I know who don't want propaganda shoved down their Absolutely. throat. So it's it's not a branding, it's a it's a freedom, a sovereignty issue. And when that's again, to, that's to wake people up. When that gets 
that flood gets at your doorstep, which we're mm -hmm. about to see financially as a segue to the conversation. Yeah. You know, I had a great conversation um, last month with Bill Holter and I'm having him on again. And, and I want to reference him to two points, if I may, which is a good, I mean, we're still going to talk about whatever you and I, because we know each other, but it's a good transition to the, the meat of the conversation we're going to have. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bill Holter um, is a broker. He's uh, He works for Miles Franklin, precious commodities dealer. Uh, he's been on X-22. I'm sure you've seen him many, many times. Okay. Uh, Bald-headed gentleman, mustache. Very straight, That's no right. nonsense, straightforward guy. Um, he's been on our show three times, going to be on again at the end of this month. And, uh, you know, he, he was saying that people have a not in my backyard mentality, right? Like, as long as it's not happening in my backyard, I don't care. But then one Friday, you're going to come home from work and Monday, the 72 hour event when all the banks collapse and all this stuff. And, you know, we've talked about this many times on your program right. unfold in each other like a cheap suit. Uh, you're not going to be able to get access to cash. Your credit and debit cards will not work. Now that floods at your house, you're going to have a lot of scared, a lot of, you know, angry, ticked off, confused, right. disillusioned. He even used the word. Um people that because now it's finally hitting their doorstep and it's not that we because the bible says in proverbs don't delight in the misery of of, of others but it's good in the sense that it's going to level the playing field like trump says because now everyone's going to be affected both rich and poor no one's going to be able to say i got mine i don't care that that attitude goes away very quickly when when it starts hitting at your you know your door absolutely pole. anybody who says Oh, that could never happen to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. You better think again. You better think again. Look at what, and this is a whole can of worms I'm opening up, but look at the whole P. Diddy situation. You know, in my mm -hmm. industry, music, I've known for years how dirty these people are. I, I right. knew, I knew the they music were. Music industry. Yeah, as a whole. Yeah. Well, you, you Not know, just we talked, oh, no. I, well, you know, I met Richard Branson, you know, that whole story with Virgin, and I saw it close up, and I, right. I knew like, you know, I don't want to get mixed up in this. I want my music so badly, but not like this. And God loves us enough that he won't let us even hurt ourselves. He'll, he'll go to great lengths to protect his children. And, and you know, many stories in your life to that. Right. But um, I would like people to check out um, obviously our show, but also tie in Bill Holter for the part two point. He was on speaking of resurrection Sunday. Um, I got on my feed that Dave X22 had a spotlight and it's very unusual for him to have a spotlight on a Sunday. You know, uh, he usually does them like on a Thursday, a Friday morning, even a Saturday morning, but not a Sunday. So that was unusual. And it was Bill Holter meeting with him. And obviously I, I've gotten to know Bill quite well and he's, he's a brilliant guy. I mean, he's, and he's honest, you know, like whether you like what he's saying or not, he's, he's real. And uh, at the 27 minute and roughly 49 second mark, Dave starts to talk to him about the failing economy. Now, I've been waiting for somebody at the level of Dave for years to say this phrase. And I was, I, you know, like most people can use the analogy of their favorite movie or their favorite sports team. And they're yelling at the screen because they're so worked, wrapped up right. in the you moment. Get you know, you get right. caught up in the emotional moment. You know the person or the team or whatever can't hear you, but you're still wrapped up into it. Everybody can relate to that. Um, and in this yeah. movement, I, I was like, like, Dave, why don't you ever ask him about the global currency reset, the reset of all the foreign currencies? You never say that. You know, I've been waiting, Denise, for years for this moment. And at that moment, he, he sets it up. And I was not expecting it because he's never said it before. He goes, well, then our economies are going to fail globally. That means we're going to have to reset all the foreign currencies, right? And I was like, good wow, luck. All my chair. And Bill's like, yep, we're going to reset all the currencies based on natural assets. Gold, silver, copper, palladium, whatever right. you grow in the ground, rhodium, phosphorus. I was like, there it is. Copper, right. There it is, Denise. That was the yes. for years of trying to, that was my 11 year thesis. And he said it. And I was just like, wow. oh my goodness. So, anyway. Yeah. Well, and, you know, going back to what you were saying before, uh, the banks, you know, we're going to go to an ATM machine and the ATM machine is going to be disconnected. They're going to be off off the grid, no power. You're not going to be able to get any money out. David Wilkerson had a prophecy about that. He didn't know how, how soon in the future it would be. He's not even here to see it happen, but right. he did have that word. I don't know if it was in the seventies or the eighties that we were, there's going to come a time where we would not be able to access our money and get our money out of the bank. Yep. 
Yep. Yep. <laughs> I remember that. I don't, I wasn't there when he said it, but I, I watched the prophecy on YouTube and yeah, it mm -hmm. was very accurate. Um, <clears throat> there's another prophet, Brandon, on the last days, bald headed gentleman, uh, really nice guy. He's in the South and he's, he's just, he's knocking it out of the park with accuracy as far as my Holy Spirit discernment can, can, uh, uh, register. And he's talking about, you know, God is giving us grace in this one last time to get on the boat, get on the boat, right? The Noah moment. And that we're going to have this amazing wealth transfer, but we're going to need to be obedient to do what God tells us to do. Now, that sounds like common sense, but you need to think about that for a minute. It's not as simplistic as you think, because a lot of people say, well, I have a humanitarian project or I have this. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is if God says, yeah, I know you have this humanitarian project, but what I want you to do is X or I want you to go here. Will you be obedient to pivot to that instead of what you want to do? That's the, that's the thing that not everybody wants to hear. They want God to agree with them instead of them agreeing with God. And, and it's going to take collectively all of us working together to be obedient and just Total submit surrender. over what he tells us to do. And, right. and we don't need to worry about what someone else is doing. Just, just stay in your lane with where he has you and be right. obedient. And there will be rewards inside of that. Right. Now, now the month of April, I mean, everyone, is, we got Passover coming up. Uh, also, the eclipse. Mm -hmm. So everybody's talking about the eclipse. Yep. Um, so I was looking at, okay, so what does the Bible say about about an eclipse? So let me see if I could pull it up. So I just want to read a couple of scriptures, and then I want to ask your thoughts on these prophecies. Sure. Uh, you know, I need my glasses for this, right? <laughs> Okay, so Ezekiel 13, 10, the stars of heaven and their constellations will not show their light. The rising sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Uh, Ezekiel 32, 7, when I extinguish you, I will cover the heavens and darken their stars. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon will not give its light. And then there's Isaiah 38, 8, uh, Joel 2, 10, 2, 31, and on and on that talks basically about the darkening, the darkening of, of the moon. So, and I hear that a lot of prophets are having words of what they believe, or what God, they believe God is telling them what is going to happen on April 8th. So what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I've, you know, you hear it bantied about quite a bit, right? Um, from what I've studied and who I've talked to that I trust, uh, it's, it's a Nineveh moment because if you look at it, there's a look at a lot of the towns named Nineveh. There, there's maps to these that run yes. through the country and they cross mm -hmm. and it looks like the cross of Christ. Right. So yes. I think that God is a, a message for America, a message for the world. But it's also a blood moon in Israel, which usually means heavy judgment. So there's going to be a lot of emphasis. I mean, in general throughout this year, but in particular, the month of April as it relates to Israel, because like you said, they've got Passover coming on the 22nd. You know, there's the connection with the red heifers. They haven't done that since the time of Christ, you know, pointing that the to the, you know, to I think it's what is it north to, it, basically facing uh, 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 Jerusalem, Jerusalem, facing the city, mm -hmm. uh, which has not happened in a long, long time. And this this eclipse on Monday, as far as I can tell from what I've researched, we won't see it again for another, I think, 23 or 25 years. You know, and if it's 23, it's interesting because that's a cabal number, right? 23, 13, 33, they, the cabal uses threes and sixes all the time when you know how to decode it, which I don't, but other people do. And, and they're very right. good at it on, on, on our team, respectively. So anyway, all that is to say that um, I think it's a great time of repentance and judgment and a warning. Uh, I think we as the body of Christ really need to. Whatever it is that we're working on, we we got to get right with him. If you know, if, I'm not singling anybody out. I'm just saying if if there's a sin that you have that's you know chronic, get it dealt with. You know, don't don't let it linger. I mean, you should do that anyway. But I, I just think it's a right. call. I think it's a call to arms moment, uh, and it's it's pretty significant. I mean, you look at the eighth, and then you have the fifteenth. You have Prime Minister Sudani uh, from Iraq going to uh, D.C. We don't really know who he's meeting with. You know, I'm pretty sure it's not the Biden. So he's going to probably be meeting with some, you know, Treasury and other officials. Uh, mm -hmm. He's going to have a whole set of docs in hand, the the HCL, the taxes and tariffs, the border. And that's incredibly important because 
how do you kill an enemy, right? You close the borders and you kill the drug, right? The drug is the dollar. So closing the border and then removing the currency auctions kills that dollar from coming through. If it doesn't have a port through a border, like the Iraq borders through all the other countries, as an inlet, so to speak, then you kill off the supply. So you got Sudani dealing with that. Then you got Passover. We just found out this morning on our team that uh, Sudani is going to be busy this month in addition because he's going to the World Economic Forum, which is obviously not the good guys, uh, to make a proclamation, hopefully, that they're ready to come back on the international stage. He's going to have the UN's cooperation with Janine, who's the uh, intermediary, you know, as you know, in New York over on a 47th and second there where I used to live. Right. Um, right. He has, she's the intermediary between the UN and, and Iraq foreign relations. She's leaving sometime. I think it's, I don't know the exact date. I think it's either mid May or early June, but she's leaving in the near future. And she has been adamant that she wants this as her, her crowning achievement or legacy. So she's going to do everything she can to turn on the purchasing power to bring Iraq mm -hmm. back in. So there's a lot packed mm -hmm. into this month. Wow. That's exciting. Very much. The bridge. I know you have a presentation you want to share with the viewers, but one sure. last question. Okay, sure. the bridge. Terrorist attack? Planned? You know, it's another good one. That's another where there's a lot of different schools of thought, you know, just like the eclipse. The th well, it was definitely done on purpose, obviously. I mean, those guys are trained, you know. To avoid uh, that. Well, right. I mean, I was going to say, like, you know, your pilot. You're hitting the pylon that you have a, you have a, you, the bridge. The yeah. captain of the ship is trained well on those ships. It's not his first, his or her first rodeo. Right. So when did they purposely, or when do you drive directly into a pylon that detonates right. an entire bridge? Um, and how brother, fast they came out to say that it wasn't a terrorist attack without any investigating? Right. Well, yeah, exactly. My thought, Denise, when I pondered it was, and it is just my own speculation. What if, you know, Q always talks about watch the water. And, uh, you know, some some people in the know have talked about the financial black swan will be tied to a geopolitical event at sea. Now, it wasn't obviously in the Aegean Sea or the Red Sea or the Pacific Atlantic Ocean, but it was technically at sea in water. So what if that was a foray into the beginning of a black swan event? Because I think... This weekend, I'm going to probably butcher the name. I'm sorry, folks. Sawanaw, uh, Oklahoma, that borders on the Arkansas border. They just okay. had a they just had a bridge go down there. And I was interviewing uh, S. G. Anon yesterday, and he believes that it's his contention that this is going to be a cacophony of events happening, a, a chain of events, because that that bridge, the Francis Scott Key Francis Scott Key Bridge, yeah. was the 27th largest port in the country. I looked it up. So they had to reroute a lot of those sh uh, ships and, and, and supply right. chains to other, you know, uh, ports to offload it. But it's going to take them, they're saying, 10 years to rebuild it. Right. I'm not sure about that because I think with Trump, you know, with what he's going to do, it's he's already probably got a plan to, to, to do it much quicker. But uh, but that's the, you know, that's the gravity of what that, that bridge represented. I also read that there were some engineers that have been complaining about the deficiency of that bridge for quite some time that there were structural issues that I guess went largely ignored. Um, right. I didn't go into it, you know, super deeply, but the, on the surface of what I read that, that was discussed. So um, it was obviously. Something intense. that comes out after the, after. After the fact. Yeah. After the clearly, facts. I mean, like with Boeing, I mean, that whistleblower, <laughs> my God, talk about that whistleblower, huh? Coming out and exposing and now he's gone. There'll be more that come out. He won't, it won't stop there. Somebody else will come out and be courageous and yeah. hopefully they'll be able yeah. to finish the job. That's a scary thought now when you're flying, you know? Oh. Well, I mean, it's funny, Denise, because I'm glad you said that. I, I used to fly uh, Alaska pretty routinely. I, I was with them for about 12, 13 years because they do a lot of flights out of, you know, LAX to uh, mm. Fort Lauderdale. Right. And they're typically in the first terminal. So I could just get right out and go to the rental car and you know, go see family. Right. But uh, they're a heavy Boeing um, alliance. And I have, as you know, we've talked, I've had nothing but issues with them since my flights in December and January, not arriving on time. Right. Uh, they had a four hour and 50, I had a four hour and 50 minute layover on the, the jetway, the runway. Couldn't even take off a brand new Boeing plane. And then 
January six was it six or seven that the one of the it was that Friday night of the first weekend of the new year this year um, in Florida Auto they had that where was it they had a plane that the fuselage blew out right oh gosh and I think I was supposed to be on that plane and I missed it because my flight was the next day so it was God's grace but uh, you know you hear stuff like that and you're like you know I, yeah they ever felt the grace of God go why I tell you. Well, if we didn't have God's protection on us. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, yeah. there's so many mighty warrior angels protecting us that we don't even know about. That's right. right. Beyond That's our right. own personal guardian angels. But uh, and you, you the good thing is, is as a believer, you can ask for as many as you want. You just have to access it. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'll go JetBlue from now on because I don't have this problem with them. Yeah. But, uh, I like yeah. JetBlue, too. Yeah, yeah I do, too. Uh, Boeing. Um, I don't know what kind of future they have. Remember, Trump said he'll make a deal if there's a deal to be made. So right. maybe there, maybe there's a clue there. Who knows? Yeah. So. Okay, so you have a presentation. I'm really looking forward to seeing. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's see here. Um, and who do you, and who who helps you with this? Well, I want to. I was. Thank you for that 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 uh, easy softball there. Uh, we have an, a very we have a very diverse and amazing team, as I've said too many times before, of men and women who are just great, humble bond servants. I would love to mention them all by name, but they've asked, most of them have asked to stay anonymous. Oh, one, of, one of which I God can mention. Them. Yeah, I know, right? One of which I can mention is, is a great brother that uh, I've been starting to have on my show routinely. And he's been a, a good friend for the last uh, seven, eight years now, Joe Williams. And he's a, he's a true nice. patriot. He's military. All right retired police officer in Houston. So shout out to big Joe. Uh, shout out to Joe. My, All right. Yeah. Shout out to Joe, but my uh, sister in Christ. Not the uh, sleepy one. No, not that one. Not the- no, he's very, <laughs> very, very awake. The um, wide awake one. <laughs> and, he, and he's a real person. Hint, hint. Yes. <laughs> hint, hint. Uh, he's like, he's a living human. Uh, my uh, sister in Christ, Judy J, who has, you know, awesome. we've worked, we've worked together on these presentations for years and she does a, a fabulous job. And she also wanted me to give sure. pay homage to you. She's a big fan of yours. So she appreciates uh, the platform. Tell her I love her. She'll see this. She'll see this. I love you, Judy. <laughs> I have to say that. So I'm not in trouble with her later. <laughs> <laughs> you do walk and I do carry Grant. The, uh, Judy, 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 Judy Johnson. Whoa. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> Um, she likes that. She likes that impression too. So that's funny. You guys have, <laughs> you guys have a lot in common off the bat. And, and we, we could check the trivia on this, but I'm pretty sure that Cary Grant never said those words, but people imitate him saying it. So, yeah, well, you, you're, you're a great movie historian of the old, of the classics. You would know better than oh, I, but I I'll take your, I'll take your word classics. for it. Yeah. I mean, if somebody could send me a clip of him saying it, that'd be awesome. Absolutely. I don't think he ever did. <laughs> Yeah, you would know better than I would. Um, but anyway, so that's the team that helps put this together. Um, we all kind of, um, my friend Garrett always says, many hands make like work, you know, from I think that's from Matthew, if I remember right. And so this team is great about just humbly, everybody has, a, this person has a piece, this person has a piece. We put the information together and then, you know, Judy and I kind of, you know, put the slides together and she's great at, you know, knowing the order and arrangement of things. So that really helps when it comes to uh, process flow of the information making sense. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people are visual. I'm visual. I have to see it to grasp it, you know, so that's why I love the presentations that you show us. Well, thanks. Yeah, I'm the same way. I I I like to see it, too, because then it's like reading a book. You can start your imagination can start, you know, taking you places. So I I totally get that. Yeah. Okay. let me see if I can share it or uh, I am going to share your screen. Maybe as you go through Uh, it. Here we go. Let me see if this works here okay can you see that i do okay just give me a second you should see the whole screen uh no okay okay do you see the whole screen now i mean the whole presentation I do. you'll be able to okay. control it if i yeah put it in no there. i can i can i can run it it's it's cool i just okay. as long as you can see the whole screen we're good okay so yeah uh so this is for your show obviously and, and and we're quick to always remind people that, you know, only God knows the timing of the reinstatement or the revalu- revaluation, depending on the currency. Right. And but we're making tremendous signs of, pro- of progress here. So uh, 
this is what we're going to be talking about today of order of topics, right? Uh, we talked about the Iraq. We're going to talk about the latest on Iraq, what's going on with Zimbabwe, uh, silver news specifically targeting that as that's the, the most popular and affordable uh, uh, metal that I think we've, we've encouraged most people to get. Not financial advisors, not constitutes financial advice, but still at the same time, that is our very strong and humble recommendation. Uh, gold and silver prices on the rise, uh, world coin security and uh, them being kind of, you know, called out on the mat. Uh, what's going on with BRICS nations, China, Taiwan status, and of course, the mass layoffs and exits of many CEOs and different verticals and industries. And I'm sure, Denise, there in New York, you've seen plenty of this oh, yeah. take center stage. Uh, and then we, we one of our members, Zach, um, and Veronica put together uh, two simple slides that we'll show you. Uh, it's, it knocked me off my chair, and I'm sure a lot of people that did see it uh, were blown away as well. Something that came out a few weeks ago we'll talk about. And then our, our normal wrap-up. Sounds good. Okay, so, you know, we want to also acknowledge uh, another great uh, Patriot Truth out there, Ariel. Um, he's not on our team by any means, but I've talked to him a few times on True Social and X, and uh, he's a super nice guy, and he's been very encouraging to us about, you know, continuing to fight the good fight. And uh, he has definitely done his part, <laughs> to say the least. Okay. So we, and, and if anybody wants on the presentation to see the information, we've put hyperlinks here. You can wind this back as much as you want and click on the links, <clears throat> excuse me, at your leisure. And you can, you can verify it for yourself. You don't have to take our word for it. So um, as he's pointing out here, and I think this is, I think everybody kind of knows if it, it's good clarification or confirmation, central banks are continuing to hoard gold, gold uh, over the U.S. dollar. And, and it's at a faster and faster pace now. Um, the move is led by the BRICS, which is a whole de-dollarization. It's an east-west reset, Denise, as we've said many, many times before. Um, gold is being amassed a strategic asset against the dollar and the global stage is built with tension. Uh, so basically you can see here, Iraq central bank is regulating the dollar transaction. So what that means in simple parlance is that it's what we were talking about Denise a few minutes ago. Uh, Sudani is doing what he said he was going to do. He's, he's working to complete the reforms, but now he's working with a body because a body wants to go partner alongside him because he has good influence still believe it or not, with the citizens. Um, and he's he's really working to galvanize their support as it relates to the elections. Um, some of the citizens are still reticent to, you know, open up bank accounts because they haven't seen the dinar change its full value yet, which is completely understandable. But they're slowly engendering trust in a body's part of that process. So uh, Sudani is working to do many, many things get the oil and gas law signed. Erdogan is supposed to be coming this month at some point before he goes to the U.S. I think he's scheduled right now on the 14th to go. Uh, we're coming up next week on Eid al-Fatar, 9th to the 14th. They're celebrating it, which will be the official end of Ramadan. And then they can, uh, he can, they can send him out to the U.S. He's supposed to have a dossier of documents, which include the HCL gas law, taxes and tariffs, um, the reforms, the border, uh, and so, you know, as I said earlier, you know, there's two ways that you kill a drug. You kill the, the drug itself and the origin point to get in, right? So if you close off the borders, you keep it from getting into the country, which is the dollar in this case. And then you kill the dollar itself by killing the currency auctions. And he's, uh, they still haven't completed that yet, but they're, they're waning it off bit by bit by bit. Not as fast as we obviously would like, but they are still doing it. And I think once he comes back from the U.S. with those documents in hand, where the U.S. tacitly up front agrees to do it and the U.N. supports him, then he's going to come back to Iraq and you're going to see all heck break loose with Maliki, who is an Obama Sortero holdover, mm -hmm. who has been living off that drug of the dollar for at least the last 14 plus years. You know, they're on a program rate, which is not supposed to last more than a year. So it's completely illegal and corrupt not unlike what's going on here. They are killing ostensibly the middle class over in Iraq. That's what they're going to be doing here in the U.S. as, as well. Right. At some point here, you're going to see a delineation between the rich and the poor. So what we want to try to do here is help, you know, your audience and God's people 
get on the side of the wealth so they can actually do kingdom change, right? Like we were talking about earlier. Okay, so moving to the next slide, Zimbabwe. So <clears throat> what they're doing is very interesting, Denise. Two main things that I see here, right? Firstly, they're letting their current currency free fall while they replace it with what? Gold, Gold. right? Sound familiar? Like what we might do here in America? Yep. Hint, hint. Yep. Obviously, you know, that's a given. For those who know, they know. Uh, but they also did something very cleverly and covertly. They launched another three satellites last week in Zimbabwe. We have to ask ourselves critically, why would they do that? Well, isn't Elon Musk working to fire up Starlink satellites all across America and throughout the world, right? They're, they're doing it set to start in July because they have elections set, I believe, August. One of my, one of my followers pointed this out uh, a long time ago. August 23rd, I believe, is the official date as it stands right now for their elections. So they get ahead of it by launching up the satellites. So they they know they're going to try to cheat just like we do, just like many countries. Right. And so that they can have free and fair elections and catch the cheating and reverse engineer the process. Um, we watch for Nelson Chamisa. We've talked about before as a Christian and is very ardently saying that the first three orders of business he's going to do, not unlike President Trump, restore the sovereignty to the people, remove the corruption and back all bonds bonds and dollars in what gold because they have the gold um i had dr scott young good friend of mine on a few weeks ago he'll be on next uh friday with us and he pointed out very wise astutely that uh they have just discovered uh, 13 trillion tons 13 trillion tons of diamonds right wow. um recently a geologist just went there we put up on our telegram last week and he did an excavation in Zimbabwe and he found the largest amount of physical gold in the world there, which I've been talking to you about with our team for quite some time, as you know, from our past shows. So it's just coming out. The truth is coming out more and more and more. And you know, Zimbabwe was very big on um, hydroxychloroquine. You know that's that. right. That's right. That's correct. That's why they had some of the least amount cases of mm -hmm. COVID or injuries right. or deaths. Right. Exactly. Just like just like the Amish here. Exactly right. So um, and, and as we pointed out before, you can see the visual here where it says on the Zim bond itself, 100 trillion. I promise to pay the bearer on demand. Possession is nine tenths of the law. Whoever, whoever's holding it um, is in possession of it and it will be back in gold. I don't care what people say. We've done our research time and time again that it will be pegged to the dollar and it will go to full value. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that. We, so we've whoever done has that in their possession will be able to cash it in one day. That's correct. They'll be able to go to a Wells Fargo or a JP Morgan, any of the participating okay. tier one banks. They will have a separate division within the bank that they can go to to uh, to redeem them out. Now, I don't know. Obviously, we're not, we have, we've never been here before, so I can't say to you it's going to be exactly like this. I know they'll right. be able to redeem it for full value, but whether they'll get it all in one shot or a managed payout, I, I couldn't tell you until we get to that point. What I can tell you is it's going to be backed in gold. It's totally legit. President Trump, if you remember, Denise, because I know you follow a lot of his details, back when he was uh, he had a show, The Apprentice. You remember that? I used to watch it all the time. Well, yep. he gave a contestant offline a hundred trillion Zim note, and he said, "Hold on to this for dear life." He said, "It's not worth much now, but but in the future, it's going to be worth a lot, and you'll be glad you had it." So, uh, to me, that speaks volumes. Oh, definitely. But you can see the articles here on Bloomberg. Uh, you can see the Sunday Mail, Zimbabwe. So you can people can cross reference the information for themselves. But you know, we're not we're very transparent. Our team we're 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 showing you and. Yeah. I think those who took action, including yourself, will be very, very glad they did. Okay, so this this is the what I was this is the aforementioned discussion we just had a minute ago. Uh, so you can see the article right here. South African-based Zimbabwean geologist makes groundbreaking discovery. See it, Denise? World's largest gold resource, valued at yes. billions. Wow. That's what they've discovered. There's still a lot of gold beneath the ground that hasn't even been touched because there's so much corruption there. They haven't been able to get to it. That's going to change. That's going to change. So you can see the article right here. I'll, I'll wow. hang on this for a minute so people can, you know, screenshot it or, or you know, just reference it, whatever they're going to do with it. 
Um, but yeah, they've right here. He said historical mine waste from with water sand called tailings contains over six billion tons of material with significant gold content. That's just what what this geologist found. That does not preclude all the other stuff they have not yet found. So they have the gold. They have they have a ton of it. Wow. You can't back your economy with it unless you have it. That's mm -hmm. the whole point, Denise. Going back to the banks, mm -hmm. uh, Basel three, right? And very simple. You know, they try to make it all vague and nebulous, so you, they try to frustrate the average person, so they won't pay attention. They'll give up. That's what we come in to do is try to bring clarity. Simply put, um, Basel three is just a uh, a Swiss form of compliance, and all it means is that the banks that are still around are going to have to show their balance sheets that they actually have the gold and silver. They say they have it. Can't be paper gold can't be paper silver, can't be debt derivatives, that they make up numbers on a screen. They because that's worthless? Sorry? Because it's worthless. It's just well, paper. Exactly. Right, right. Those who are holding gold and silver certificates aren't holding the asset. They're holding right. the debt. The right. banks or the lenders are the ones holding the real asset. So that's why we say if you don't touch it, you don't own it, right? Similarly, that's why I said, you know, paying to the bearer of note on demand. Who's holding the note? That's who's boss, right? So that's your, no pun intended, or maybe so, golden ticket. But this is just further proof for those who are naysayers or who just refuse to believe. You can see this article pretty much debunks any myth that they don't have the gold or they're not going to back their currency in it. Why would they, why would, don't you find it curious, Denise, timing that it's coming out now, months before all this stuff happens? Mm -hmm. Everything happens for a reason, so... Yes. Okay. So moving forward, yeah. I think we made our point. Moving forward on silver, uh, this is an interesting article I think that came out last week. So uh, yeah, March 25th. So Michael Oliver, the founder of MSA Research, that's an independent precious metals dealer. Um, he has been a predictor and a pundit of precious metals for quite some time. What he found is that we have hit the $26 level for silver uh, uh, at least, uh, what is it here? Uh, five, six, six times. Well, it just hit today again at, uh, this morning when I checked at 2610 or 2620. So mm -hmm. this would be an additional time that it has come out. So it's either now at six or seven times. Don't beat me up folks. If I don't have the exact number, right. But multiple times it's, it's now, going up. it's mm -hmm. going up and mm -hmm. now it's gone up. Denise, remember I told you when we hit the magical number of 30, it's moved up to 40. Wow. And it's been reported really? now that silver could easily hit 50 bucks as its first peak. So it's moving up in multiples of 10. And, and, and it's our belief as a team that um, gold will easily be no problem in the multi thousand. It's already now, I think today it was almost touching 2300 last I checked, but we believe that gold and silver could probably, we believe gold probably could hit 10 to 15,000 by the end of this year. And silver should be somewhere between two to $500 you know, because wow. it's going to be the new, it's the new old economy. It's God's money. Haggai yeah. 2 a who knew? Yeah. But, but he's, he's yeah. predict things correctly on stocks and bonds and major markets. And he looks to be right once again. And yeah. don't forget. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just want to interject Please. people that are listening. Um, for those that can't afford to buy gold, everybody could afford to buy silver. It's cheap enough, you mm -hmm. know, you can get twenty dollars worth, fifty dollars worth, you know, of silver just and hold on to it. You know, that's yep. just it's it's definitely going up. And if you and, and if you really want to make an issue about buying silver rounds, you can buy junk silver, which is 90 percent silver. And you should have that anyway, Denise. Like I asked right. Bill, I said, how much silver would you recommend as a financial advisor or as a, a metal specialist, somebody who's been doing this for, you know, 40 something years? I think he's qualified. I said, you know, what would you tell the viewers they should have in terms of precious metals? He said, as a rule of thumb, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, as a rule of thumb, I recommend that every household have at least. Now, don't panic people when I say this. I'm not saying you have to have this. I'm just telling you what he's saying. He said, I recommend if you can do it, that everybody a thousand dollars per member in your house for safekeeping. So if, if you can't do that, not a problem. If all you have is, you know, ten dollars or you know, 15, whatever your situation is, um, just go and get junk silver. You should have it anyway. Uh, you know, qu quarters, nickels, dimes, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. 
and right. have it because that's how you're going to be able to go in the very near future when not only the banks shut down, Denise, but think about what is everything tied to, Denise? What? Everything is, what is everything tied to? Yeah. Gold? Well, yeah, in the new economy. What, but in our what do you current, mean? Currency? Oh, what are we In talking? our current system, credit, credit, which is debt, right? Every, if you go to the grocery store, and you just buy your groceries, you don't give it a second thought. But the the, the truckers, the, the grocery store manager, the supply chain people, they work on what's called net terms, net 30. Net, you know, like I'm sure in your job, you have your payroll right. people, net 30, right. net 60, net 90. Right. You have 30 days to pay, 60 days to pay, 90 days to pay. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a credit system. Everything right. runs on credit and technology. If the banks go, when the banks go down on the grid, which yes, they will replace with Starlink, but there's going to be a little bit of a delay in between to make a point, right? Just like a you know stadium, right? Remember when they built for you guys Giant Stadium and they had the old one and the season ended and they start to demo the old Giant Stadium and they flick the lights on MetLife and yes, Met off Life. you go. It's a transition period. Same thing. I, I'm using that as a visual analogy since we're doing this. So uh, the banks are going to go down, the grocery stores they're all on on computerized systems. Those are going to go down. So you, you know you better have cash on hand in some fashion, uh, you know, to be able to pay for things for for a period of time. Your gas, you know, same deal. I I, I it's have it's always a, good I, to keep cash in the house. We should all be a Fannie Willis and keep all. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to throw that in there. Shameless plug, but uh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But I also recommend people have for gas get a go go to Home Depot or wherever you go bank. Lowe's. Yeah. Walmart, get a five gallon ga gas tank and fill it up while you still right. can. And How long can you hold on to gas? Let me ask you that. Because we I'm were victims of Hurricane Sandy and there was a gas shortage. And so, you know, after that, you tend to, you know, get the jugs and store the gasoline, you know. But ha but I hear that you, after a certain amount of time, it's really not good anymore. Like, how long can you store gas? That's a good question. I've had mine for three years. I bought oh. mine in. September yeah. 21. And because you can still I, I knew put it in the car? Yeah, put it in my garage. It's it's sealed in one of my garage storage units. And uh, I check it from time to time. I stir it up and it's fine. Okay. I've used I've used a little bit of it and I've had no problem. I don't know what the cutoff date on that is. I couldn't yeah. tell you. I'd like I, to I don't it. obviously I don't think you want to go 10 years, but right. I think I think you're probably safe three to five years. But the point I of getting it now is because when you know we have gas lines again, like my parents talked about in the seventies, mm -hmm. you don't want to be stuck on that. You know, you want yeah. to be able to have a reserve to get around and then, you know, just have cash to get, to get gas and you'll be able to barter with, uh, with junk silver for food and clothes yeah. and, and gas for, for a period of time. So yeah. it's, it's a, it's a backstop. I have to tell you during hurricane Sandy, um, the gas shortage was so bad. People were um, on Staten Island. They were driving over to Jersey and trying to yep. get some from there. I waited in line for three hours and they ran out of gas, three cars ahead of me. So I couldn't even wow. get gas, you know, after waiting Wait. three hours. So gas, you know, gas shortages, gas lines, not a good thing. It's not going to be nope. good. Nope. And, and with the, the junk silver, get yourself an empty coffee can. Like what, what do we do back in the day? And whenever you have extra change, when you go to the store and you give them, you know, bills and they give you change, Drop it in every night into the coffee. It'll 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 add up. And just hold your on chalk, to put in your chalk full of nuts jar. You'll be just fine. That's right. <laughs> my, my parents' old backstop for coffee back With in the, the day. The yellow lid, yes. Yeah, the yellow lid. Yeah, we're getting off topic, but you remember the uh, Sebastian Maniscalco with the Sanka? That was yes. great. He was talking about my mother. <laughs> yeah, he was talking about Sanka. most my of our mothers, grandmother. Mothers, right? Yeah, my grandma incredible. used to invite all of her friends over and that Entenmann's coffee cake. I'm like, how did he know that? Like, that's crazy. <laughs> it was like almost every household was like that. Yeah. yeah. When I compare notes with my friends, we all kind of had like a similar childhood in our homes. It was very similar. Well, very I'd like similar. to see us go back, Denise, to a country where we could start to connect again like that. I think that would we're going to need each other again in that same fashion. Yeah. yeah. You know? Where neighbors actually cared about each other, right? And yeah. looked out for one another. Yeah, exactly. Left their doors open and helped each other and shared. Yeah. And yeah, we need to go back to that. Absolutely. Well, well, all the pride is going to get eviscerated because it's going to level the playing field for people, you know, and they won't have it won't be uh, it won't be this. Well, you know, I got mine. Good luck to you. You know, that that ego is just going to go out the window. And that in that sense, it's a really good thing. 
Yeah. Okay, so that's the silver portion. So now we'll we'll speed ahead to the next one. Uh, as you can see, obviously, talking about what we mentioned before, gold and silver rising, you can see it. Uh, as I said today, you know, I think gold went up today about $37 or something like that. So it's making pretty ch sizable moves. It's not, you know, a buck here, two bucks here. It's making more and more aggressive moves because the central banks are buying it like crazy for the reasons we talked about with Basel III compliance. That and, and people are starting to wake up like you see Costco and places like that are, are, are selling gold and silver and selling out. Uh, that's a that's a huge uh, untapped market for Costco that used to sit bare. And I've even seen Denise in, in uh, I had to get my watch battery replaced the other day at the mall and they're selling gold and silver, too. So people are getting hip to what's going on from a mm -hmm. business standpoint. Uh, so anyway, um, there's a big, big thing going on with the yen, Denise, that we need to touch on, because I had a show last week with Greg Manorino and we talked about this. Uh, and it's funny, the day after our, our our podcast, it came out on Gold Telegraph that the Japanese yen was at an all time 34 year low against the dollar, which is already tanking anyway, because they're dumping our treasury bonds off the ship like the Boston Tea Party. Wow. So they're they're in a lot of trouble. And uh China has significant leverage, not unlike other countries on Japan, you know, monies they've loaned them and they want to make good on that. So it's our contention. I know people disagree. That's fine. But our humble opinion is that we believe when I say we, the team, that there's a very high degree of probability that Japan will be joining the BRICS sometime this year mm -hmm. because they're going to have to get out of all this debt and they're going to have to uh, realign and restructure and reset their their currency, which is crazy because you're talking about a, a country that, you know, 40 years ago was the head of manufacturing. It was the big king as far as, you know, the, the top currencies in the world, along with the British pound and the Mexican peso. You couldn't go into a bank without seeing them prominently displayed on the screen. So to see them fall like this is is really when you see that happen, you know that the economy is about to free fall. So that might be something for your viewers so to kind of. Keep is, that because is that because they're in a lot of debt? They're, all, they're in a lot of debt, and they also bought up a lot of our treasury bonds. They bought a lot of our junk bonds and debt. They they uh, accrued a lot of our debt, and they're kind of sitting there with a hot potato now trying to get rid of it. Okay. And they're not the only country. I mean, they're just, they're just one that I've really keyed yeah. in on because I'm really uh, watching things go historically unwinding in the opposite direction, right? As you can see here, the silver 50 year price ch chart, a mm -hmm. very bullish reversal. It's just, you know, we talked about this before many times, Denise, on your show that, uh, you know, silver is the is the linchpin for manufacturing, right? It's in virtually everything we use and even colloidal silver that you can consume as part of your immune system buildup, yes. right? Uh, there's different types of silver I'm, I'm, for that as well. I'm just using that as the most commonly uh, referenced uh, type of you know, physical uh, or you know, consumable silver, silver. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, it's in the chips in our cars. It's on the watches that people wear. It's your iPads, you yeah, know, it's iPhones, it's, it's right. iPhones everything. It's uh, solar panels, by the way, have mm. two ounces of silver per solar, pan solar panel. So here in California, it's not uncommon to see houses with large amounts. of. I'll walk in my neighborhood and I'll look at the solar panels and I'll count. Okay, that person has 200 ounces of silver on their roof. They don't even know it. I mean, it's crazy. You know, once they find that out, they're probably going to go rip it off and try to extract the silver somehow and, yeah. you know, pay, you know, cut it off or melt it down because it's just a matter of time before people realize this. It's just the problem is by the time the mainstream of society realizes it, it's already too late. It's already yeah. happened. Right. So silver is going to do nothing but go up just like gold. What's interesting is that as we see the stock market, um, money moving out of it doesn't matter how much they pump it up as money moves out of it it's going to move like water when it gets unblocked in a dam it starts to find its way through rocks and through other crevices right it moves and it flows similarly uh when the money moves out of the stock market it's going to go into many places it's going to go into cryptos and it's going to be going into precious metals and oil right uh let's not forget the price of oil is going to <laughs> I'm not trying to scare people. I'm just preparing you. Speaking of the gas point, we showed an article on our Telegram several weeks ago. Uh, weeks ago is like months on our on our channel because we do a lot of updates every day. 
Uh, but JP Morgan has predicted a price chart of, are you ready for this? $380 a barrel for gas. What does that translate to? It's about $17 to $20 a gallon. What did President Trump say at one of his rallies? He said, don't be surprised to see $15 uh, uh, for a gallon of gas or more. He yeah. was telling us that's what's coming. So anyway, this is uh, just a very good sign of us going back to a gold standard as a world and the East-West reset or BRICS to de-dollarize away from our hegemony, which is a monopoly of the dollar off the, the necks of the rest of the world. They're tired of it. And I think in truth, a lot of our, um, a, a lot of Americans are tired of it as well because, you know, they, you know, you go to the gas station, niece, you go to the grocery store, you see it yourself every single month you go, you feel it, right? It, it, it's pronounced that feeling and you're not buying better quality or more quantity. You're buying the same stuff you probably bought a year, five, 10 years ago, right? Yeah. But yet it's, but yet prices are going up. People haven't made the connection. That only yeah. happens when you have the death of a currency. You have a death of an old system. That's right. what happens. I wanted to uh, inject. Please. Um, because I, I was just, I was in Pennsylvania and I was, and I love to go to those antique shops and just, you know, look at the coins and, you know, Morgan dollars and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to, you know, just let everybody be aware that there are fake gold and silver coins out there, you know, right. so you have to go to a, a, a reputable deal or you have to make sure what you're buying is the real deal. You know, just, just be very aware of that, you know, and a lot of it is coming from China. Mm -hmm. They're making these uh, counterfeit coins and selling them. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Thank you for that, for saying that, because, yeah, I always recommend when you're looking at dealers, whether it's a local mom and pop or, you know, a big operation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, make sure that they've had they've been in business at least 25 years. If it's a family owned business, that's even better. Um, look at their reviews on Yelp. Look to see. Right. Um, what, what's your neighbors, your neighborhood, if anybody's bought what their experiences have been, um, you can always go, you know, on the Comex and which is a, a, uh, a financial chart and that will tell you the price or you can just even go on Google, whatever, and just look up what the spot price is of mm -hmm. gold and silver and then look at, you know, what they sell it for. You know, um, they usually, usually as a rule of thumb in my experience of buying gold and silver the years, um, right. If they're doing, again, it's going up now with inflation. So you have to factor that in. But on average, if they're somewhere between three to seven dollars, usually above spot, that's that's fair and reasonable because they have to make a profit, too. Right. But it's just, you know, there's a line between, you know, making a profit and just being egregiously raking somebody over the coals. And uh, so, you know. Yeah. That's a way that you can kind of keep them honest and, and show them that you're educated. If they see you're educated and you've done your homework, they're going to respect you more than the average person. Uh, and they're going to uh, uh, probably give you more favorable deals. What's also interesting, Denise, we're talking about this, is um, Utah just yesterday removed the taxes and tariffs off of gold and silver in their state. So now we're virtually at all 50 states have no taxes when it comes to purchasing gold and silver. So that's a really good sign. On New York and New Jersey have tax. Shocker. Um, <laughs> that's even why Cal I go to Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> my even, even here in California, they don't have the tax on it, which amazed the heck out of me, but very grateful. Um, yeah, so, Cuomo was, Cuomo, yeah, it was nice enough to do that a few years back. Yeah, he, yeah. he slapped the yeah. tax because we never had a tax. I mean, I've been purchasing gold and silver for, for years. And right. this was just recently before he left office. He slapped mm. the tax on anyone buying gold and silver. Yeah. What a generous guy. Yeah, well, nice yeah, what a benevolent soldier. Uh, and the silver, you, I just wanted to let everybody yeah. know, you can use a magnet to tell if it's fake or not. Because if you take if you take a magnet and it picks up, it like attracts to the coin, that means there are other metals in it. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one way to tell that it's not real silver. Good point. Very, very good point. Yep, that's true. Thank you for that. Um, but uh, yeah, because, you know, I lived in New York for a while. And yep. and so, you know, poor New Yorkers, you know, you got to go over to the girlfriend I had at the time lived in Jersey. So I was going over there to see her. But but at the same breath, I was going to when I would have a car at, at certain times, 
uh, I would go over there to get gas. I mean, most New Yorkers have to go across uh, to Jersey just to uh, to get a break on stuff like no, that. No, they the stopped that too, too, John. They stopped yeah. that too. Really? They stopped that a few years back. Wow. Now, the, the gas in Jersey is the same as New York because huh. that's exactly what was happening. New Yorkers were going to New Jersey for tax. I okay. mean, to, to save money on the gas. Right. Yeah. And, right. um, and so now you're not going to get a, a break if you go to Jersey. But you me. I didn't know that. If you okay. want to go to Manhattan now, you're going to pay an extra fifteen dollars just to drive into the city for a congestion price. I heard that. It's awful. Like, Isn't that awful? Out of your congestion mind. pricing. You've already de-incentivized people to go there. Are you you're just further trying to drive businesses away? I mean, it's it's yeah, that's I crazy. I think they need money to pay for the illegals. <laughs> well, yeah. That's, that's that's my theory. Yeah. I mean, that's gonna be short lived. I mean and this is all, unfortunately, as real as it is, it's also serving as a wake up operation to get people really ticked off and involved, you know, that are still sitting on the sidelines. You know, we're going to have to we're going to have to come together as a nation here. And there's no doubt about it. Yeah. So anyway, but thank you for the thank you for that information. I, I, that was good. I think that'll help a lot of people as well. Um, so real quick on this one, we have to spend a whole bunch of time on it. But um, another great source of information, insider paper that we use quite a bit. Uh, Portugal suspended Sam Altman's world coin over data privacy fears. Uh, this particular coin, I think, was going to be tied to the CBDCs and is definitely part of the new world order. Oh, so, boy, look at that. Yeah, really? so it's a, yeah, so they kind of, as you can see right here, they began operating last year, providing users with a digital identity and world oh, ID. No, 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 all. no good. Yep, yep. That's what I'm, I'm just highlighting it so people can see. Yeah. Um, you know, so they they caught that one. I was really, really happy, Denise. I don't know what, what your thoughts were about Javier Malay. He went in there a couple of weeks ago and shut down their central bank, their primary central bank in Argentina. And he just laid he just got rid of the fat of 70,000 government workers. I mean, he's really trimming the fat over there. It's got to come here. It will be. It's got to um, come here. Yeah, we know who's going to we know who's going to help with that mm -hmm. endeavor. So, mm hmm. Okay, so that's that. Um, this is a nice visual, Denise. Speaking of visuals, this paints, an, uh, I think, a nice image for people oh, to see how great. everything yeah. correlates, right? Mm -hmm. So, BRICS. Everybody knows what BRICS is: Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Uh, and inside of that that ananagram family is all these countries that are jumping on board. You know, Nigeria has made it clear several weeks ago they're going to plan to join BRICS. What's interesting about them? is that they're not far removed from Zimbabwe. So we expect uh, Zimbabwe to join the BRICS as well. It makes perfect sense with South Africa, obviously, in the mix. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about Japan already and our strong belief that uh, there's a high degree, of high degree of probability they will have to join the BRICS and with the leverage China has. But there's, uh, there's now coming out about a total of 81 nations getting ready. It was, it was 39 or 40 initially, and now it's doubling. And there's discussions that Texas is working to join the BRICS as well. So we might see a lot of individual states within the U.S., particularly the red states, my future Tennessee state, I'm sure will be joining the party, that right. will uh, will join BRICS and secede away. Because Trump, as you know, during the pandemic, um, revised the Constitution in, in November, right before the elections. And in it, he made amendments that allowed the states to basically self-govern away from the corporation known as the U.S. And so, you know, Texas is leading the way in that initiative. It's not it's not been passed yet, but they're they're fervently working on it. They're also going to have their own uh, digital gold token coin that's, you know, exclusive to Texas. And I know Tennessee is going to be doing that and many, many other red states in that in that part of the country. Uh, that's why they're, that's why I've always admired the South so much. And uh, so you can see how everything kind of circulates mm -hmm. from this uh, from this slide. But it also goes to show, Denise, what we've been saying. It's an east west reset. The wealth of the wicked is being laid up for the righteous. We're seeing a de dollarization away from the corrupt swift system, the central banks. You see what Malay is doing. You're going to see that proliferate around the world. You, you everybody's seen. Uh, Ireland and Spain and France and England, the farmers are standing up and they're saying no, right? And the people are galvanizing behind them because everybody loves the farmers for obvious reasons, right? Salt of the earth people who also yeah. just happen to feed us, who knew? Mm -hmm. 
We're also going to see Iraq join the BRICS. Um, we're still waiting on the announcement from the World Trade Organization. I'm, I'm prayerful that that is going to happen before Sudani comes to D.C. on the 14th. Uh, so, because that will be an important step for them to make their declaration to come back in the international stage. Putin has already invited Iraq to come back, uh, to, excuse me, to come to BRICS with the proviso that they reinstate their currency. So that was a very important uh, disclaimer that he put out there uh, prior to them coming. And, and I think that once Iraq does come back in the international stage and all that happens, you'll see them uh, uh, come on to the BRICS shortly thereafter. So everything is being timed and scripted for a certain effect. Okay, we talked about this already with Japan, and here's mm -hmm. the article just so people can see it, right? It's back on March 27th. Um, as you can see here, S.G. Anon, speaking, speaking of uh, the man himself, right. uh, rightly pointed out this article about uh, financial service agency. They held an emergency meeting on the strength of the end Wednesday and expedite the meeting's itinerary a day up. And this is also backed up by Reuters, which is a very well-known source. So they're in trouble and they know it and they're going to have to make some very quick moves and decisive moves. And I believe, as we've said before, based on all this, that they will do just that. Mm -hmm. okay, so I think they're very instrumental, I have to say, because SG, when, you know, when he first came on the scene, mm -hmm. he's very knowledgeable. I mean, he's oh, yeah. done a lot of deep dive, but he wasn't so, you know, in tune with this until he's, I, I believe, until he spoke with you. And I think he started doing more research. And I think you're very instrumental in having him do deep dives and, and learn more about the, uh, the wealth transfer. Well, thanks. You know, again, you know, the team we have is uh, influential in and of their own right. And so, as I said before, so wonderfully humble. That's why I think God has blessed us with such a great team because he knows he can trust us to, you know, to do, use it correctly and that there's no you know, ego here. It's just about being in service like you do, Denise, all the time. Um, but it's, it's just I'm a big fan of him, but I was always wondering, just like with Dave with X-22, why he doesn't bring up the financial. And, you know, it's, it's interesting, Denise, because I had approached him a couple of years ago and he was, you know, he does his file shows and all that kind of stuff. And he had said, hey, here's my email if you want to reach out to me. So I took the liberty of doing that. And I said, I would love to do shows with you, you know, on the global financial godly reset, the East West, uh, East West reset specifically, you know, and he wrote back very kindly and said, you know, I don't, my mentor and I don't really focus very much on the financial. And so I just figured, you know, as you know, Denise, everything is in life is God's perfect timing. If something doesn't happen Absolutely. right then, sometimes yeah. it's not meant to be, but sometimes, you know, God answers prayers. Yes, no, or wait. Right. And this was a, a seminal example of just waiting. And now to hear two years later, now that we've been afforded this platform, I think God was timing it for effect, and and uh, I, I, you know, tried one more time uh, to to Laura, his producer for the overture, and thankfully they accepted, and and I just started working in the financial components because they really do, truthfully, the geopolitical and financial are it's very much a marriage between the two. You can't have one without the other. It's just been our strong belief that those the reason that we focus on the finances is because we believe that. Um, the wealth transfer for God's people is the best way to make wholesale changes, you know, globally. And those who have the money have been subjugating the rest of the world this whole time. So when that, when that power shift changes again, from the wicked to the righteous, you will be able to, first of all, use the talents God made us to do. It wasn't to go to a day job and sit in front of a computer all day and just waste away. Right. It's not why we're here it's to true. pay bills, pay bills of lading and die. Um, we have, we, every one of us, including you, especially has talents that have been shelved for quite a while. And that's not God's heart. He didn't give us to us to waste. If you don't believe that, go read Matthew 25. It's pretty clear what he did with the, the men with the three talents there. Right. But anyway, um, it just, we have chosen to focus on the financial because that is what will f in the immediacy of things, free up people to be able to use their talents, to be able to do kingdom projects, you know, create humanitarian projects in their communities, in their states, you know, whatever the case may be. And cause the, the, the cool thing is God allows us to have fun with this, you know, and enjoy it, but also be obedient to what he's called us to do. Right. right. So, um, so I just really felt strongly that I had to keep trying with him on the financial front because of the fact that geopolitical is so closely married 
to it. In fact, as I said to you in the past, uh, some of the people that I was closely watching were, were their contention was that the financial was hinging on a geopolitical event at sea that would free up all these dollars to come back stateside from very wealthy countries. And there'll be a period where people will think like the 70s, oh, this is great. My, you know, I'm making more money. My house is worth more, blah, blah, blah. And it's a very short lived drug because that will quickly turn Denise to hyperinflation. But what that will do is power up some of the private placements, which will find its way, you know, you know, to set up the reset when people go to exchange, you know, their currencies and bonds and what have you in the respective banks. It's it's a necessary thing to turnkey the rest of the process. But thank you. I'm, I'm glad that, um, you know, when our, we had our show yesterday, it'll come out. Yeah, here. and it's great to, to hear him, you know, talking about it. I'm going to yeah. have him on Friday. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. So are you planning on talking to him about the finances as well? Uh, we'll see where it goes. Possibly. Yeah. I have Fair other enough. topics that I want to touch on. So of course. Maybe. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just I'm just grateful to your point that we have an opportunity to to, to yeah. bend his ear about the. I mean, finances. that's that's my observation. That's how I see it. No, I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So anyway, uh, I don't want to. How, much, how many you more over. slides do we have? Uh, just a couple more. Oh, a couple more. I didn't want to hold you up or, or the audience here, but uh, these were I didn't want to gloss over the points either because they really do connect quite nicely. Yeah. No. 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 And I don't want you to do that. No. No. You're fine. You're, no, we're good. You're good. We're good on time. Okay, cool. Well, anyway, China, Taiwan, it's, it was just something I talked to him about yesterday on the show, funny enough. And my point to him was, look, you know, it, we know it's coming. Uh, Trump even said it, you know, that it's next. And it's been kind of dormant. You know, it's kind of been under the surface, just kind of treading water. But I knew it was coming. And now we see this article coming out about um, the discussion of China, Taiwan, this is Kristalana Georgieva. She's the managing director of the wonderfully nefarious IMF. She took over for Christine Lagarde, uh, who's running the, the European Central Bank. To me, that's like running from the frying pan to the fire. Yeah. You know, it's it's like it's like being, you know, the governor of a state to being the mayor. You know, it's it's you know, you're just trading one headache for another, basically. Mm -hmm. And in a way, it's kind of a demotion because you can ask a lot of European countries. When I've traveled over there, they hate the euro because it kills them on the trade and export. Right? They they lose so much money when their when their uh, products are going um, out of country. They get killed on that exchange. It you know it, when I went to Italy, our you and I both of our our heritage partly. Uh, they you know they still use the lira. I mean they, they use the euro, but they still have the lira, and they would they would certainly go to the lira exclusively if they had their way. As an example, so anyway, she's. She's currently the front of scenes for the uh, for the IMF at this point for the last couple of years, and she's talking about three percent growth over the you know twenty twenty four for the economy, which is, you know, it's not very good. It you know it, she's trying to, pardon the term, she's trying to polish up a turd, basically make it look, mm. put lipstick on a pig. It's probably a better way, yeah. to say it. but yeah. you get the idea. But this is what got my attention right here. China, Taiwan, uh, Taiwan admits U.S. troops are now stationed on islands off the coast of China. There's not going to be a World War III, but, but it's going to look that way. And they're going to take us to the brink to try to make a point, to get everybody on board as really? much as possible. Yeah, yeah. But what China, Taiwan really represents, it won't last very long. It, it's certainly going to last a lot quicker than this whole nonsensical Ukraine situation, right? which we know is just a money grab and money laundering and many other horrible things. But uh, this will be a much quicker um, image of war, we'll say, for lack of a better term. Anyway, uh, what this is really about, folks, is about Vietnam. I've said it before. I'll say it again. This is going to free Vietnam up en enough, not 100 percent, out of communism to break free. They have a ton of silver. They have Litecoin. They have oil, they have many, many, they have gold, they have a lot of precious metals, and they have a powerhouse workforce, right? For the better part of, I think, what, 12 to 13 years, they were leading the world's GDP for individual countries. About 60 to 70 percent of China's manufacturing base left China and went over to Vietnam, right? They make a ton of stuff, Samsung, for example, you know, a lot of things. But um, this is what this wholly represents. So I would really encourage people to keep an eye on this and understand 
what it looks like and what it actually represents are two different things. And if you're holding Vietnamese dong, which we strongly recommend and have before, you're going to be very glad when this happens. Okay, so talking about closures and layoffs, I think this is a very broad subject that everybody's familiar. Just highlighting a couple of small emphasis points. We can see Denise right there. You're in New York. You know, my dad used to work at Penn Plaza and before he retired, Macy's Day Parade, you know it well. They're yep. going to be laying off thousands of workers and closing off hundreds of, I think they've slated to close, Dave X22 reported, I think 450 locations over the next two years. So, you know, what, what I find fascinating, Denise, is how people totally misread the situation. Think, well, that's just because of the internet and people are buying online. No, no, That's no, what no. they say. Very good, John. No. You're absolutely right. That's, that is, nope. it's not accurate, but that is what people are saying. That's what and, people think. And I said, no, it's the economy. It's the economy. They can't afford to stay open. You're telling me that people wouldn't still want to go in and buy certain of things course. like clothes and shoes. Say that, tell that to the average woman that her you know body style is changing. Let's say she's losing weight or she's toning up or whatever. And she can't, her, her dress size changes. She just want to go in there and see the new styles and try them out. But you can't even go into a store to do that. <laughs> what is it? I think, Denise, what, 52% of the retail market is catered towards women, right? Something like that. Oh, the retail market? Yes. Yeah, it's probably more, but I'm just being conservative. I mean, it's a huge chunk. So tell that to the average woman that you're going to close down their favorite, you know, uh, you know, clothing stores or, or you know, shoe stores or chocolatier right. stores, whatever, you know, it's like, right. yeah, that's not going to go over too well. So and you still you know, have a whole generation of like the elderly that still go shopping that don't yeah. go online. They don't have a computer. They don't have a laptop. They don't go online to purchase anything. They go right. to a physical store, you know, correct. So it's definitely, I told my kids, I said, they're going to be calling the Dollar Tree the Dollar Seventy Five Tree. Well, they yeah. might as well just call it the Two Dollar Tree because before right. you know, they're going to be raising the prices again. I mean, it's just, it's if listen, we had four years under Orange Man Bad, four years under Sleepy Joe. You or know, whoever, whoever that is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can compare. We can see how good we had it. Yeah. As opposed to now. So if people aren't waking up, then I don't know what's going on because I, there's not one person that can tell me that they're doing financially better now than four years ago. Yeah. I mean, I don't even think that's except, a except Biden. Biden says that the economy is great. It's the best yes. economy we ever had. Everything's yeah. great. Just pay attention to the stock market. Don't pay attention to gold and silver. Don't worry about gas prices. Don't worry about the grocery store. Forget all that stuff. You know, don't worry about your taxes and all right. that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, nothing to see here. You know, it's like uh, the Wizard of Oz, right? Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Yeah. You know, um, if you go, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not sponsored by them, but if you go to Artillery Tea Company, Tco. Mm -hmm. yep. dot com, they actually show you. They have a list of all kinds of groceries, and under one column is Trump, and the other one is Biden. And when you check, it tells you how much it cost when he was president and how much it costs under buy and you can compare and you can mm. see the huge difference in prices how much everything has gone up yeah absolutely thank you that's a good a good resource um i'll definitely check that out i, I think i've seen that on what telegram before but it's good to go and, yeah. and revisit it's artillery tco.com artillery yeah. okay i'm right i'm writing that down thank you okay <laughs> speaking of dollar tree good segue denise $2 there, dollar tree. <laughs> yeah, two data, two data, two dollar, uh, two dollar. <laughs> I don't want to go. Don't want to go too far there. Um, I thought it was a thousand stores, but they're saying six hundred. But uh, I, I think it's somewhere between six hundred and a thousand stores. They're going to be closing up, and the workers, from what I've heard, are very happy about it because apparently the quality of life there is not very good. And oh, apparently, terrible. the research I've done, Denise, on this on some exposés show that when a Dollar Tree goes into a neighborhood, it tends to kill a lot of the mom and pop stores in that area. So I also think, Denise, as we see segueing to the new economy, we're going to see a new way of, of doing business, right? We're going to do bartering. We're yes, going to have our online, we'll be doing That's bartering. Right. But, but I also think we're going to see a resurgence of mom and pop stores again. And, then, and as we yeah. should, you know, because yeah. there's a lot of people who want to start businesses, who have, you know, family ideas and patents and uh, are passionate about, you know, farming or passionate about right. making jewelry or music equipment, whatever they're into, they're, yeah. they're finally going to be able to do that. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, 
Yes, but I'm going to also debunk the myth that people's misassumption about, oh, well, the physical store is going away because everything is online. Really? Well, how come okay. we're seeing mass layoffs with Google, Netflix, uh, right. PayPal, uh, eBay? How, how do you explain UPS, that? UPS laid off. UPS. Right. Well, that's, but that's. Well, so, well, they didn't lay them off, but they, yeah, they well, got no, rid of 12,000 jobs. Basically. Right, but, but UPS isn't solely online. They they have a physical presence, as you know. So I mean, they you know going to door to door. But oh, you're anyway. saying online stores, right? And uh, I just want to say something about Dollar Tree. Yes. As someone that shops there, you're not always getting a bargain. So sometimes you're actually paying more for something in Dollar Tree than you would in a supermarket. So hmm. people have to like really look at the prices and compare. It's an interesting point. Especially the food that. section, like in the back. Usually mm -hmm. when you go into a Dollar Tree, they have like re refrigerator freezers in the back. And so you're just assuming because you're a Dollar Tree that everything is cheaper than the supermarket. And that is not true because they have they have items back there that are five dollars, six dollars, seven dollars. You know, and you can get it mm. much cheaper in, in, say, ShopRite. Yeah. Hmm. OK, good to know. Thank you. I didn't. It's been years since I've been there, truthfully. So I yeah. But had a yeah, chance to for, really for the, the listeners, if you do shop there, just yeah, yeah. no, no, compare that's the valuable prices. Information. Yeah, no, absolutely. Compare and it's about that's valuable information. Thank you. Um, so anyway, uh, so you're seeing all that. Uh, Boeing CEO, we talked about Boeing, he stepped down. Uh, now I can't get into it on this show, but next week we are interviewing someone who currently works for them that's a subject matter expert and we're going to have to disguise this person for the obvious reasons. And he, they informed me that uh, they have brought in a woke female CEO, uh, which will ultimately lead to this company's demise. Uh, so it's, it's going to affect them greatly in a very negative way. So that's something else to watch as well. And then you see here, Citigroup, you know, sweeping uh, layoffs, 5,000 layoffs last week. Um, and and you, the banks or branches are closing up left and right. Last week, there were, I think, uh, 18 branches. Wells Fargo led the way with eight. Uh, I know in my neighborhood, I'm, I'm near a main hub, but there were a lot of satellite branches that got closed up because they're not going to become wealth advisory centers. That's why, you know, Denise, if we talked about this a while ago uh, for you, Citibank in the city, right? You can tell the banks that the branches are going to make it and the ones that aren't and the ones that are are going to be the ones that are wealth advisory centers or wealth management centers. They're catering to people like us who have the currencies and the bonds because they're going to make a 1% basis point per transaction, which equates to about a hundred thousand per transaction. This is what's going to keep that in Basel three transparency is what's going to keep the banks that stay alive, alive, whoever that's going to be, you know? So uh, there you go. So anyway, just thought we would put a nice bow on yep. that. Uh, this is the one I think this is a really cool thing. I want to give see Vanna. Yep. This Who's is came... put Vanna in there, Judy. That's awesome. Uh, Judy put the slide in, but where it came from was actually my friend, Zach Boyd, a ah, fellow Patriot and one of our nice, team members Zach. who was at home. He doesn't watch the television. He had it on his background, white noise, making dinner for his wife and kids. Uh, he happened to hear this phrase and grabbed his phone in time, rewound it back at that. and caught it. And so, so listen to this, listen to this folks. I'm going to prove right now that this was real. We heard people say the haters, Oh, it was AI generated. Really? Okay. Well, you could no, see it's a television and it's taken well, by phone. It's Zach's TV on his phone, but I'm going to take it a step further just to shut these knuckleheads up. <laughs> um, because they've always got something to say. They got a problem. Not my view. Me. My viewers are not knuckleheads. Not you. No, no, you people, your people are great. I'm not saying my when viewers. I bring I it on. The, my viewers. <laughs> bring, and and I love mine as well. But unfortunately, we get a lot of haters and knuckleheads and trolls who just try to plant seeds of doubt because they're so threatened that we're over the target. And and my my viewers are smarter than that too, yeah. but it doesn't stop the haters from coming in. Anyway, so backing it up, Veronica Korn, another fellow uh de facto team member, such a wonderful lady. She makes these terrific uh, crystals that I put in my home and they help channel away the 5G energy and converted it into healing energy, which is really cool. Anyway, she found this, she researched it on Wheel of Fortune's website and she pulled up the archivals, right? Of the different game shows of, of that week. Mm -hmm. And these are the different rounds. And as you can see, round three, exchanging currency. So clearly 
the good guys are putting out very awesome. obvious comms to let us know that this is coming into focus. That is awesome. So we, uh, thanks to Zach and Veronica, we were able to break that first on our Telegram channel, and then I'm sure it circulated around virally, but uh, they did a great job in catching it. So That's awesome. And, and thank them, because now I want a bucket of hot buttered popcorn. <laughs> Get your popcorn. <laughs> Get your popcorn ready to enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. Exactly. So this is this is really cool. This is a new thing that Judy just put in. We because we obviously we try to make these presentations as as current as possible, right? We do our mm -hmm. best. Um, for the longest time, people have been debunking the Sarah Jassara, saying it's not real and blah 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 blah. Well, here you go. Google, Google, who's the bastion of honesty? Wink, wink. Yeah. Because they're so upstanding. Executive order 13849 from, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's for something else. My bad. But no, actually, wait a minute. I got that right. I'm sorry. I was reading so it too quickly. Executive order 13849, as a result of researching keywords in the SARA Jasara, executive order authorizing the implementation of certain sanctions set forth in countering America's adversaries through Sanctions Act. This has been verified today. And this Google, what basically what it means is Google is admitting that Nasara Jasara is in fact real. I they have admit. to tell you something. This is recent. No, this is recent because many yep. times I have Googled Nasara Jasara and that never came up. Yep. This is last recent. Yeah. Yep. Well, that this is coming up. Yeah, we found it a few days ago. And wow. uh, and I want to give the credit on this one to Jasara.news. He he does a great job of giving timely articles and he helps us out with many copious pieces of information over the years. So shout out to you, Jasari. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a good guy. Um, anyway, so that that's a pretty stunning revelation, right? Yeah. Based on your reaction. Now, this is probably where, you know, we're about, we're about done here, but this is a great place to kind of put the hammer down, Denise, on what we've been saying on your show mm -hmm. and others for a while. And you can back me up. I've said this how many times on your show? Um, in the aspect that we need to be watching Israel. There's two countries you need to be watching in our humble opinion, Russia, right? Because we know what Putin represents and Russia bailed us out of world war II. Some people know that some people don't, they're going to historically do replication. They're going to help save the world geopolitically and financially. Once again, we already see them doing it through bricks. So we need to be watching Russia, but the one we really need to be watching funny enough this month, Israel, right? And we've already talked about some of the other events, but mm -hmm. here's the deal. When Sudani comes back from the U.S. and the WEF and all those wonderfully Christian organizations, wink, wink, um, he's going to be dealing with two battles, the U.S. militia, the deep state portion of the cabal, right, in our country, and dealing with the corrupt Iranian proxies as an artificially installed government. Where does that sound familiar? Hmm? Right. So copy these countries, copycat each other. So Iraq is going to have two issues buffering them to be able to reinstate their currency on the international stage. They're going to need help. Well, Israel's going to be the one. Trump said Israel's going to make a grave mistake. But is it a mistake or is it scripted in the sense that Israel is going to, they've already started, as you can see here. We, uh, we caught this yesterday. And uh, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, pardon me. God um, bless you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, it looks like, you know, Israel's now, uh, we got this yesterday, is declaring war on Iran. We found out and confirmed that they bombed, uh, I think it was a hospital and some... Kitchen workers. Kitchen workers, yes. Kitchen workers and uh, some embassy sites, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, now, again, obviously, it's not, a, it's not a good thing that anybody perishes. We're not saying that. But what we're saying is things are not what they seem. It's... Okay. It's a false flag event for something bigger. It was so, an unintended strike, right? Correct. That's what they're calling it. Correct. So, so what we're we're saying is, and we're not alone. Currency three sixty five is saying this, and other people in the know are saying it as well. But anyway, we're watching for Israel to make their scripted quote mistake, where they're going to attack the secret nuclear power plants of Iran. That will be the event, as Kim Clement said rightly that will help to free the dinar. When things seem at their worst, I will free my people. We believe this is how it's going to happen. And you're seeing that they're already doing, you know, preliminary strikes, right? They're not even waiting for Iraq to go to the U.S. and get everything signed. They're already kicking the ball off. 
So we're going to be watching very closely once he comes back from um, the U.S. and from the World Economic Forum at the end of this month, around the month of May, to see the fireworks going off. It's just a matter of time before Israel does this. And once they do it, we believe it will be days to weeks we will see the reinstatement happen. Now there's... Do you see any? I'm sorry. Uh, no, do ahead. you see any retaliation happening now? I mean, I mean, killing these people. I mean, do you see Iran like striking back now? Well, I think that was what it was partially designed to do: is get Iran to react because the deep state cabal in the U.S. is they they need a scapegoat. They don't have a war. We've talked about that. So they need a they need a narrative. And the narrative is to blame Iran, blame Iran. It's it's Russia and it's Iran. They're going to try really hard to get people's eyes off of things here stateside by saying, see, you know, we uh, we can't do the best for you because of Russia and Iran. Look at what they did. They're trying to to to, you know, goat them into a war any way they can. But they're not going to get that because, again, this whole thing, whether people know it or not, is is pretty scripted, uh, unfortunately. But. Um, again, when this, what we just talked about happens, then you're going to see it, it, it come front of scenes where the beautiful thing, Denise, is we're watching it happen right in front of our eyes. Yeah. It's not, it's not just, you know, speculation or even prophetic dreams, which would be enough, but you're seeing it play front of scenes now. That's how, you know, we're getting really close. It's not, yeah. not my opinion. It's just, I'm showing it to you right now in yeah, front of you. You could see it. Yeah. Exactly. Now. I have one more thought on this, but I'm going to save it when I stop the share because I want to look you eyeball to eyeball with your audience on this. Okay. Okay. So now we're at the end. You know, we uh, we pray over America, obviously, as it is God's country. We give honor to Kim Clement for all of his wonderful prophecies over the years. Yes. That many, many times. Mighty man of God. Yes. Absolutely. And, you know, he was able to see President Trump in his first term get realized. Two weeks later, he passed away. I think God was yes. gracious enough to let him see that his prophecies did come to pass from the Lord. Yeah. One of my favorite verses, Hebrews 11, 1, faith of the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Too many people say incorrectly, I'll believe it when I see it. No. First, you have faith for it. And then the quote proof comes out. That's and right. I think I've been showing that to you in this presentation time and again. So that's yeah. the. That's uh, a great picture of you, John, by the way. Oh, thanks. That was a great thanks. picture. Thanks. Well, uh, that's very kind of you. But uh, it was it was it was a good day. One of one of a few good days. But um, so that's the presentation. Thank you for being patient, folks. And that thank was you wonderful. Denise. Thank you. I hope I didn't interrupt you too much. No, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I apologize. I, no, 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 no. I didn't want to stop your flow. But yeah, no, you're great. It was good. I was it was good excited points, about everything you were talking about. Yeah. No, you, you made some really valid points that helped the the overall tenor of the presentation. Here's the thing I want to say to your audience and, and you eyeball to eyeball. This is okay. very important, okay? People, please pray over this and write this down. This might be the most important thing that we leave with today. So when Israel makes their grave mistake, right, with the power plants, U.S. deep state is going to be very upset because they don't want this reset to happen because they know it's going to get into the hands of God's people and spiritual people who are going to do, you know, work to help other people to, to love and serve God's people. They don't want that. I mean, that's why they've been hamstringing the, the dinar, the dollar over the dinar and every other nation for that matter. I think that should be fairly obvious to most everyone at this point. They're going to be really ticked off and they're going to try everything they can to mess with us before. And this is, this is not my, these are not my words. Benny Wilson, the late, great Benny Wilson, who, um, you know, was a very passionate man. He was a former banker. I had the opportunity to speak to Benny uh, a couple years back and connect with him during the pandemic. Um, and God rest his soul in peace. Uh, he, uh, he worked very diligently in this community, whether you loved him or hated him. He was very passionate about this subject. And he rightly said, and, and I had a chance to tell him, hey, Benny, you were right about this. And thank you. Um, they are going to try to stop our blessing before the RV, during the RV, and after the RV. We've talked about before, and obviously now we're going to talk about during and after, right? Um, during the RV, they're going to be really ticked off, the U.S. deep state, that this actually happened because they don't – it's like Hillary. She never thought she was going to lose. Like They actually are so narcissistic. They don't – they think they're untouchable and impenetrable. Mm -hmm. Well, our cabal deep state's the same way. What am I getting at? 
when this happens, they're going to put sanctions on the dinar. That means they're going to try to block the banks from doing it. Now, everybody take a deep breath. Listen closely. When that happens, do not panic. Do not run out and call an 800 number or go to some of the, the scammers are going to come out of the woodwork. Denise, like you cannot believe, yeah. oh, the banks aren't taking your currency. Don't worry. We will. Yeah. Call and we'll take care of you. Yeah. No, you know, you're right. yeah. try to meet you in a back store yeah. hotel and you're going to say, oh, great. You can do the exchange. You're going to give me your currency. Oh, can I, can I do the exchange now? Oh, no, no. We have to take it back to our office. No, no. Hold no, your no. currency, folks. No. Do not get impatient and do, and I'm talking to myself too. Do not get greedy. Do not get emotional. Do not get impatient. Do not get greedy because those sanctions will only last one to three weeks. Sudani, the prime minister, will come out, and he's in an election year too, by the way. He knows this. He'll come out and make a proclamation. Okay, the sanctions have been lifted. Now we can resume with with the uh, with the reinstatement of the dinar and the banks, because the banks aren't going to want to touch it during this time, because you know they don't want to tick off the treasury, and you know that's where their bread has been buttered to this point. So stay as calm as you can. Do not react. You held on this long. Some of you have held on. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. If you waited this long, just wait a little bit longer. Be patient as much as you can. I know everybody's tired. I know everybody wants this to end. I got it. Okay. I'm, I'm all with you, but we are only going to get one shot at this. We must do it correctly. So please, when those sanctions happen, don't freak out. Don't rush to try to game the system and I'm smart. I'm going to go around them. That's not going to, you're going to get taken. Just, wait. Just be patient. I promise you, if you react impulsively, you'll wish you never knew about the dinar. If you don't believe me, go ask former lottery winners who've won hundreds of millions who lost it all because yeah. they didn't. They, they'll tell you, I wish I never won this thing. I never wish I never had a lottery yeah. ticket. So just please, folks, please, when those sanctions happen, just let it. It's like it a, a storm. A curse or a blessing. Well, let the storm pass over you. Right. And, and just wait. It will happen. And then, you know, you'll be able to proceed. Let it be a blessing, not a curse. Correct. Okay. That's, that's all I got. Good. Well, you'll be here and, you know, you'll be yeah. you'll be here telling sure. us, hey, guys, all right, encouraging yeah. us every step of the way. Thank you for that. My pleasure. Thank you for that. But I, I'm glad you brought that up because there will be a lot of people coming out with different messages saying, you know, uh, just make an appointment, come here, mm -hmm. you know, bring your currency with you. And yep. you have to be careful. Like anything else, we have to be, we have to watch out for scammers. Five years to know, five years ago, Denise, I got calls from people saying, Hey, I'm not going to mention names, but this private placement guy said, if I don't do it through him, I won't be able to do it at all. I'm like, really? Really? Oh, so he was the appointed one. Well, let's use some critical thinking, Denise, shall we? Let's let's back that up a bit. <laughs> Good luck with that, because you're telling me that you're going to cut the banks out of this. And oh, here's another thing, Denise, we need to think about. Folks, you're holding leverage. I just showed you with the Zim bonds, right? You're holding leverage with your currency. Has anybody considered this? I haven't heard anybody else say it, so I'll say it again for... For the cheap seats, right? For the folks in the back. Um, you have leverage, not only with the currency, but let me ask you a question, Denise. Uh, so the banks are going to exchange it with us, right? We bought this from treasury-backed currency dealers, did we not? Yeah. So they sell us currency. What else do they do? What, they back it up? What? They buy it. They buy it. Yeah. You know, it's like when you go to Vegas, you oh, know, yeah. like, we'll buy and sell your jewelry or whatever. Right, you know, right. Bunch of. The right. currency dealers, the treasurers, they're going to buy it back. So you now have a bidding war. You have the banks and the currency dealers. So you you have options. You can look at both sides and see who's going to give you the best deal, who's going to treat you the best, who's going to give you the most expedient right. service, right? So leverage that to your to your advantage. If you go to a bank with one note, like we said, it's just an exchange, folks. I mean, it's, it's right. not just... It's life changing, but the mechanism is simple. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, I have to laugh. I mean, I hear the most ridiculous, erroneous stories. Uh, an alien's going to be sitting in the bank uh, measuring your heart light. Uh, there's there's going to be a 
this is going to be a machine that you hook your finger up to. And if your intentions are pure, I'm like, what, what are you talking about, man? Like I talked to these people. I mean, they, I said, you're going to laugh me out of the room, but please just verify this. They're like, you're not serious. Right. I'm like, I'm just telling you what is being put out there by other people. It's ridiculous. It's just an exchange. You yeah. go, you deal with a wealth manager, you shake their hand, yeah. you ask to see the back screens of the most current rates. If you've done your research and it lines up and you have most important thing is God's discernment. If you have peace about that environment and you have peace about that person, yeah, proceed. If you don't go somewhere else, there's plenty yeah. of options. You're, you're not required to go and, and, you know, take the first offer you get just because they tell you they're going to cater to us. Believe me, they know what this is worth. Their yeah. survival along with, you know, gold and silver transparency and the balance, that's what hinges on. They, they need us as much as we need this. It's very mutual. So, um, yeah, just remember, folks, you have leverage and exercise that leverage and, and, and just take one note and start. And then you can always go back and, and, and exchange the rest, you know, when you feel led to do so. Yeah. Okay. And before I let you go, Chinese bonds, anything on that? Yes. Um, Okay, so we talked about the Zim bonds. This is this is a tough subject. Um, they are going to go. They they are going to be highly backed. When I talked about the dollars that are going to flood back after all these events we discussed, will flood mm-hmm. back stateside. That will in turn fund the Chinese bonds and the private placements that will mechanize them or or redeem them. I have to be honest with you, and I don't like saying this. Please don't come at me in the comment section and shoot me. I'm just telling you the truth. As I, as far as I know right now, the banks are not taking them. You have to have a paymaster or a treasury authorized paymaster to redeem them. So that's why I don't talk about it a lot because I don't want to get people's hopes up and get them all teased about it. Because unless you have a way to do that, I don't know. There may be another way that's coming. I don't know about, but as I know right now, what I can see, that's the, that's the only way that we see it at present. Okay. Maybe we'll hear something else in the near future. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. It would be nice because I would hate to see people miss out on that because it is, it's is—it's going to be really good. Okay. Well, John, thank you. Thank you for spending so much time with, with me uh, and, and right. the viewers and uh, that wonderful presentation. Hats off to your team. God bless all of you for the information you're bringing forward and, uh, you know, giving everybody such insight so they can decide do they want to be a part of this do they want to you know purchase any silver any gold uh currencies foreign currencies you know now they now that they know they have the option to decide what they want to do so thank you for bringing all that information to us and uh i always ask you to close us out in prayer so i'm going to ask you to do that now thank you Precious Abba, Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us. We rejoice in our glad. Psalm 118.24 says that. Lord, um, I thank you for the opportunity to have a platform with with Denise. Um, You know, two believers, imperfect by all means, but still willing to uh, put ourselves out there for you. Um, We pray that this message resonates peace for your people, that they receive it in their spirit, and that they take it to you in prayer in their prayer closets or on their walks whenever they spend time with you throughout throughout the day they would ask you to show them if it is in fact true and approved and i pray that you would speak to them individually lord and show them through the holy spirit which guides them to all truth and once they get that peace show them what to do in terms of action you have a customized plan for each one of us Um, It is your good nature to bless us and not to see us fail, but to prosper us, to give us a future, as Jeremiah 29, 11 says. And Lord, we just pray that um, that they would see the puzzle pieces coming together. And as they see it coming together, they would continue to keep their eyes focused and transfixed on you and what you would have them to do minute by minute and how they should move throughout this process. And I pray that they would. Uh, take this uh, well transfer, this blessing, or I should say the next phase of this well transfer, because we're going into the second round now with the currencies and bonds and other things, that they would use it um, 
well, they would use it responsibly, that they would build a, uh, a legacy for their children and children's children, as number says. Uh, but they would be able, they would be flexible to move at the speed of thought that comes from you. If, if they have their own desires that you put in them, that's fine. But I pray that they would be obedient to move where you tell them to move, even if it means that they have to preemptively move in another direction quicker than they would like, that they would be quick to be obedient and move in that direction because there's a reason why you're doing that, Lord. You see what we don't see, you, as Isaiah points out. Your thoughts and ways are so much higher than ours. And, and Lord, this, this is your blessing. This is not man's blessing. You know, the military and all that are very important. Uh, and, and even certain people, good people in the treasury that want this to happen are important. But you throughout your word have removed men from positions that were nefarious. You, you put people in positions of power and you take away. So this is not man's blessing. This is not man's handiwork. This is yours yes. and yours alone. And I pray, that's why I pray we would use it responsibly. The gold and silver are yours, Haggai 2.8. I just thank you that you have put us on the earth for a time such as this. This is a historical time. We will never see this again. And this will be talked about for eons afterwards. And so I pray that we are on the right side of history. And I pray that we would lock arms in this community and help each other, not put each other down, not try to right fight not try to minimize someone else to make ourselves look better, try to be in competition with each other about petty insolences that don't matter, that have no kingdom value whatsoever. Because we will be judged by the words we use, Lord, and how we treated each other, right? And so I pray that um, the enemy wants to come and seek, kill, and destroy. Our strength is in our unity. Our strength is in coming together and finding the common bond. Let's help each other, Lord. Let's work together not against each other. There's enough of that. We need to come together at this critical point because the enemy would love to do nothing more than distract us with garbage to get us off the game, keep our eyes off of you at all costs. We can't help him out anymore, Lord. So we rebuke that evil. We rebuke distractions. We rebuke any delays of the wealth transfer that the enemy has in mind, Lord. And we pray that most of all, your will would be done and we would partner up with you because it's the safest and greatest place to be. And we ask these things, Lord, in Yeshua's mighty name. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Amen. Amen and amen. And I just want to encourage people not to be afraid when it comes to investing. Um, you know, don't say, I, I, I can't, I can't, I don't have the money. Listen, the Lord will provide, the Lord will open the doors and he will give you the ability, even if it's just to purchase a small amount of silver. Mm -hmm. you know, don't don't let any kind of uh, fear stop you from participating in, in this and, and reaping the blessings that the Lord has for you. Yeah, and just real quick, Denise, on the backs of what you just said, which is so important, we've, we've discussed this in the past show, uh, to those on a fixed income or of a more seasoned age or whatever. Um, you know, we understand, we hear, you, we hear where you're coming from, but what you speak is what you, you know, Proverbs 23, six is a man or woman speaks. So they become. So when you continue to say, I don't have, I don't have, I have lack, 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 you're giving life to death. So right. change your mindset. Number one, to the best of your ability. Number two, you have talents, you have experience and wisdom that cannot be measured in money. Mm -hmm. That's wisdom that people need. What are you doing with it? Is it sitting on the shelf collecting dust? Are you helping the young, younger generations who need your wisdom? Are you helping your neighbors? Um, you have value, you have skills. I, I don't know, some of you can bake, some of you can knit, some of you can are good in construction, you can rebuild cars. You have talents. Other people need it. Use that and barter. Use the talents God gave you. Like Denise said, God will make a way. Use those talents to barter with friends and neighbors and family and, and they can trade off with you in gold and silver or uh, maybe a note of currency or a bond or, or maybe a combination thereof. But, but don't sit tacitly on the sidelines and just give in to defeat. You have inestimable, inestimable worth and value. You just have to tap into it. And this is the time to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. John, thank you again. My pleasure. Thank you again. And um, God bless you. And I just pray that, you know, 
The Lord continues to use you. Thank you for being open to everything that he has you doing. Um, you know, if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't be, you know, sharing all of this with us, you know, and, and teaching us, you know, because you are listening to the Lord and that, you know, you are being sensitive to his voice. So I just want to thank you for that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for the platform as well. All these years, you, you started it off. So if it wasn't for you, who knows where the momentum would have uh, stopped at that point. So thanks for taking a chance. We appreciate it. Thank you. God is good. All the time. All right. Until next time, we'll do it again, right? Okay. Definitely do it again. All right. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I uh, love you and God bless you. God bless. Take care. Take care. Bye. Please share this video. And if you are interested in purchasing gold and silver, because it is going to continue to go up. So get it while you can, while you can afford it. Um, I would suggest my people, I use Swiss America. They've been around for a very long time. And um, I will put the phone number in the description below this video and you can give them a call. And uh, that's it. Subscribe to me on YouTube and Rumble if you haven't already and on Telegram. The links are in the description below. Thank you again for watching. God bless you. And I love you. Bye, guys.